Rub up your engines! So your car's overheating. Today I'm going to show you how to diagnose and fix an overheating car. Pick it on for a reason. Always check the coolant. Coolant's full to the top. Check the radiator cap. Make sure it's not cracked. This isn't cracked. Check the cooling fan. When you start the car and turn on the AC, it should run. If it isn't running, it'll overheat in traffic. But when you're going 60, you got 60 mile an hour wind, it won't matter. But this one overheats all the time, so it's got something else. And the something else is often the water pump. Water pumps spin to pump the water. They're seals. They go bad, then they leak. This is a weep hole. The seals go bad rather than blowing this off. The pressure comes out here and you'll see fluid dripping, which is the case in this one. Now this water pump's hiding down here, so we gotta get to it. Now realize there's no working room here. We're gonna take the motor mount up and then jack the car up in here with a jack to get working room. So off comes the motor mount. These are 14 millimeter. I'm in a hurry, so I'm using an air wrench. It's a lot faster. Put the bolts up here on the windshield. Now we can jack it up. Now we have more working room. We gotta take the fan belt off. This bolt and the other one down here that makes the alternator swing. And with a hammer and a screwdriver, we can tap it in. Now the belt's loose. So we can slip it off. There, now the belt's out of the way. Now next you gotta take the bolt off the water pump. But the problem is, the water pump itself will keep moving. So we have a pair of vice grip pliers to hold the pulley so we can loosen those bolts and it won't move. That way you can get your wrench on, break them loose. Then they come out easy as long as you have a flashlight to see what's going on. You can use your fingers once you start it. And out comes one, there's three of them. Then with the last bolt the pulley comes off, remember it goes on this way, not this way. It goes on front ways like that. Then you have to take the water pump bolts off. You can't see in there, but there's one, two, three, four, five, and they're 10 millimeter. So you unbolt them all. Actually, this is in the way. So you lose this ratchet. Sure, rust it on. There we go. There's one. Gotta get them all off. But before you take the last bolt off, put a drain pan under there to catch the coolant. Then you can get a big screwdriver and hammer. You can tap the pump off. There it goes. You heard gargling. Now most feel because you got to scrape the old gasket off the engine, but these Toyotas use this metal gasket. The kit comes with a new one. See, I don't need to scrape anything off. But it's a good idea to get the gasket and the pump, get some of this 3M black weather stripping, make a little bead so this doesn't slip. Always put the end on tight or your glue will dry up. Then you just look at this and line it up. Let's see. They gave the right gasket. You want to line all the holes up. Make them all lined up perfectly and let it dry about half an hour so it doesn't slip. Then you slide the pump back in the hole and bolt it on. Put the five bolts back. Then you put the pulling the three bolts on the right way. This pointed in. It's always fun lining them up. Start by lining one up. Then once you spin it on, you can see it right there. There it is. You can easily get the other three on. Tighten them up with a wrench. Now I got a new fan belt, so we're going to put it on. As long as it's jacked up, it's easier to reach it in. They don't have to crawl on the bottom. Then you pull with the screwdriver to get the alternator tight. Then tighten the two bolts. First the top one. Uh, then the bottom one. Bottom one's a 14 millimeter. And that's it. Then to make sure the water pump's on tight, you want to make sure those three bolts are tight. Now that the belt's tight, it won't slip. Uh, that one's tight, that one's tight, and that one's tight. And while you're at it, you may as well change the thermostat on the bottom of the hose. And fill it up with cool. I'm using the pre-diluted stuff so you don't mix anything. Go all the way up to the top, put the cap back on, and take it for a ride. Now sometimes there'll be air bubbles in the system, so drive it around, and then maybe the next day, first thing in the morning, recheck it. It might need a little bit of coolant as the air bubbles bubble up to the top. It won't overheat now, but check it the next morning and fill it up to the top again, if it needs any. So now you know how to check an overheating car and how to replace your water pump if you need one. Do it yourself. You know you bought quality parts. I bought factory nip and denso parts. It's done right. You have the satisfaction of knowing you fixed your own car. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, there's a company called Lincoln Company. It's spawned by Volvo and Geely, the Chinese company that owns Volvo, where they think car ownership is outdated. You pay a certain amount of money a month, sort of leasing the car. You can also put it in a system where people can rent the car. You can sublease it to other people to use at certain times to pay for it. Now they launched it in Amsterdam. We all know what they do in Amsterdam, so they might be a little fuzzy in the head there. Get what's called a membership. And the membership's almost 700 bucks a month. These special Volvos that are made just for that. They're partial electric vehicles. 
levels. You can divide it with family and friends. You can join a group where people can rent it from you for whatever time they want. Now the membership includes 777 miles of driving per month. Then you got to pay money extra if you use extra ones. And they say that this fee includes insurance, warranty repairs, roadside assistance and maintenance by Volvo's dealer network. Here I can see a giant flaw already. They say, oh, well, they take care of it all. They never take care of it all. And these are new cars. What's going to happen when they're older? It's just a way for them to push cars out. They're always looking for ways to sell them. So any way they possibly can. Oh, here, we have to say, you can, you can join a club and, you know, you can pay this. You get a deal like that. I don't care what anybody says, especially when you talk about insurance. You loan your car to somebody else and say their kid gets in it and drives the smashes into a tree or, God forbid, kills somebody in a wreck. It can come to you liable. It's your vehicle. And the insurance companies will often say stuff like, well, his teenage son drove it. He wasn't allowed to drive it. We're not paying anything. Don't think that you're covered by all this stuff. And of course, I read an article by this guy who lives in Amsterdam and oh, he loves it because he oh, he has an electric bicycle and this would be so convenient that I can get it when I want to use it and, and then rent it out to other people. Can you imagine the headache of how do you know when you want your car and then some clowns driving it somewhere else in the Netherlands for that day or the next day? A rat's nest, an absolute rat's nest because they tried some of these sharing things when I lived in Houston a block away at one of these big condominium projects. I noticed they were all gone and they didn't do it anymore and the companies went bankrupt. There's too many intangibles of renting a car by the hour or the day. Who's maintaining them? Who's really responsible if they get in a wreck? I'm not holding my breath on this one, but of course this guy lives in Amsterdam. It's like the people I met in Seattle that says, God, you're so old fashioned. Oh, we're not going to buy cars anymore. We're going to do that. And guys told me that, you know, 10 years ago and I'm still laughing because it's not working even in Seattle these days. <laughs> <laughs> Their image of the future, that's exactly what it is, an image. It's not reality. The companies, of course, they're dying to get people to get their cars anyways, buy them, lease them, whatever, give them some money for the stuff they're building. So they'll try anything. You want your car, but somebody else is driving it. The reason you get a car is because it's convenient, right? This makes it rather inconvenient if you're renting it out to people, your friends are Even worse, it's, you can share with your friends and relatives. Well, after a short period of time, guess what? The friends won't be friends and the relatives will be feuding. <laughs> Well, I guess Porsche decides they're going to join Tesla. They just recalled 43,000 of their Taycan electric vehicles. They may stop running while you're driving down the road. Not the safest thing on earth. Earth. And they have to visit the dealer to get it done. Supposedly they could do online software stuff. Well, turns out they can't. So you got to bring your car in. How embarrassing for the Porsche dealers to have their rich customers come in, inconvenience them to have their car reprogrammed because it might die on the road. Porsches aren't the most reliable cars in the world as they age anyways. And these are brand new cars. You can imagine when they get old, the problems they're going to have just like the regular Porsches. I can't see it being any different. The company's always been a company that makes fast cars that zoom around and cost a ton of money and then when they get old and fall apart and cost a fortune to fix. I can't see their electric being any different than their gasoline one and they've been making a gasoline one for decades and decades and decades. Of course they're going to have problems with them. They're starting from scratch and they're putting all this high technology in and of course it's all going to break just like everything else. It's electronic and high tech. Take that drone there. That's a Mavic 2 drone. The thing flew four times and now it doesn't work. And you know why it doesn't work? Because the software is garbage. In it. Now, that happens to be Chinese software. I'm assuming the German software is better than that, but still, it's a good example of too much technology, too much software. Thing worked four or five times and it won't work anymore because it won't connect to itself. <laughs> At least it didn't stop while it was running and crashed to the ground like some people I know have gotten them. At least the Porsche isn't a flying car yet. It just stops on the road. It doesn't fall from the sky yet. <laughs> Darren Link, it's a Scott. He got an 09 CRV all-wheel drive. I drive faster than 60. I let off the gas. The steering wheel checks. Goes away when I brake or accelerate. What could be the problem? You say it goes away when you brake. So it certainly isn't warped brake rotors because if it was when you braked, it would shake even more. Decelerate only. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but you probably got a problem in the transmission and all wheel drive system because when you take your foot off the gas, then there's back pressure on the drivetrain and that can make it shake. Now, pray it's something simpler like look at 
the front wheel drive CV axles. There's a CV joint on the inside and the outside of each one, on each side. If the boot's ripped and the grease came out, great. I fixed the car the other day like that. Only thing wrong was the boot had ripped on the inside and it made it shake like that and I replaced the whole axle from AutoZone for $59 part and it went away. So pray it's something simple like that, not internal to the transmission system because it'd be a lot cheaper to fix. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell!